Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how we can show push notifications using Firebase. So those notifications will be displayed on every device we want it to be displayed. So as you can see, I can enter a title here, for example, hello, what's up as a description. And if we now click on send, then this notification will be displayed you can see on both devices, but also on this device. And of course, I will also show you how to only send this notification to the other device so that it doesn't get displayed on this device. That's what this token edit text field here is for. But don't worry about that for now. I will explain this in detail and also how we can get that token. I already assume that you connected Firebase to your Android Studio project and also set up the Firebase cloud messaging dependencies correctly. You can check that under the tools tab here in the Firebase Assistant. Then this will open up. You go to the cloud messaging tab, open up the blue link, and both these options here should stay, say connected and dependencies set up correctly. If you haven't done that, then make sure to do that before starting this video. If you don't know how to do that, then just check out my video about how to connect Firebase to your Android Studio project. Then what you also need is the dependencies I have. You can see I have the Firebase messaging dependency that should be added if you include that Firebase cloud messaging functionality with that Firebase assistant I showed you before. Then you need Curtin's dependencies because we're going to use Retrofit. So make sure to use those dependencies too. Retrofit will be needed here to make a post request to the Firebase API so that Firebase actually knows when we want to show that push notification to other devices. And since I like to use Retrofit in combination with Curtin's, we also want to include those Curtin dependencies here. And then you can see my layout file is set up like that because that's not the focus of this video. I won't show you how to do this. You should be able to create a similar layout or simply get this layout from this video's description. There you can find my GitHub repository. Simply copy paste the XML code and then we are actually good to go and can jump into main activity and start with coding. As a first step, I want to declare some constant values that we need to use the Firebase API. For that, I like to create a new class called constants, select class here. And inside of that class, we will create a companion object and open that up so we can access those constants from everywhere. The first one will be a const val for our base URL. If you used retrofit before, then you know what this is for. That is just the URL we are going to make our requests to. And that will be set to HTTPS um, FCM that stands for Firebase Cloud Messaging, dot Google APIs dot com. And the next one will be your Firebase Cloud Messaging server key. So we write const val server key and you will get this server key from your Firebase console. So I will show you how to get this. So make sure to go into your Firebase console. That is the project I connected to my Android app. So really make sure to choose the same one. Then we want to go to this settings tab here and go on project settings. Then on cloud messaging. And here you can see that is my server key right here. We want to copy that and go back to Android Studio and simply paste this in those quotation marks here. And as a last variable here inside of this constants class, we will declare the content type of our request. So content type that will be application slash JSON. That is just the format we need to put our request in to make that request to Firebase. You can simply see that in their documentation that we need exactly that content type to make our requests. Otherwise, it will throw us an error. The next step will be to create our data classes for retrofit so we can actually post that notification body. Let's go to our root package and create a new class. Select class here and I will call this notification data. That will be a data class here. And inside of the constructor of the data class, we will have a title that is a string and we will also have a message, which is also a string. So that will be the title of our notification and that will be the message. So basically the description of it. And then now when we have that notification data, we can create another data class called push notification, which is also a class, of course. Also make this a data class. 
and inside of this constructor here, we will have the data parameter and also make sure to really call it the same as I do because that's how the parameters must be called for that request. That data will now be of type notification data we declared before. And this class will also have a parameter called two, which is a string. And that will basically be the recipient of our push notification. So we can later either um, pass a topic here we want to send this notification to. So that means all the devices that subscribe to that specific topic that we can declare will receive that notification. Or what we can do is we can pass one or several recipient tokens. So that is just a unique identifier for a specific device or for a specific instance of that app. So that is just needed to send that notification to a specific device and not to all devices who subscribe to that topic. But you don't need to understand that for now. I will explain this in detail when we get to that point. So now that we have both of our data classes that represent the request body, basically, we can now create our actual API interface. So make sure to create a new Kotlin file or class, select interface here, and I will call this notification API. Create that interface. And in here, we will have a single function, which will be a suspend function because we will use coroutines here. We will execute that function asynchronously because it's a network request. I will call this function post notification. And this function will take as a body parameter. So the data we are going to attach to this function, the notification that we want to send with this basically, um, will be a notification of type push notification. And the return value of this function will be a response of type response body and make sure to import response here, not from the OK HTTP 3 library, instead from the retrofit 2 library, really make sure to import this one. And then on the one hand, we need to annotate this function with at post because this is a post request. We need to pass the URL of that post. So that will be attached to the base URL we declared in our constants class. That is our base URL. And the URL we need to specify here is basically the part after that. That will just be fcm slash send. You can also find that in the documentation of Firebase Cloud Messaging. And we also need to annotate this function with add headers because we need to override the default headers for this request. Because on the one hand, we need to override the authorization of that request because we want to pass our server key in the request header. For that, we simply pass authorization colon key is equal to, and now we want to pass our server key here from our constants file. So we write server key, make sure to press Alt plus Enter to import that server key. And as a second parameter of this headers, we want to pass the content type. You can see that we also declared the content type here in our constants file and the server key. Both of that is needed for our request. So make sure to pass content type colon. And here we simply pass our content type from our constants file. And I just realized I have a little typo here, authorization, of course. And that is basically it for this notification API. The next step is to actually create our retrofit instance. So we create another class for that, Kotlin file or class. I will call this retrofit instance select class here. And inside of this class, we will create a companion object. We will have a private val retrofit by lazy. If you don't know what lazy is, that just means this variable here will only be initialized if we need it. So by default, that won't be initialized. But once we access that variable for the first time, then it will be initialized. And then it will have the value we declare inside of this lazy block here. And this value will be retrofit.builder.base URL. Here we're going to pass our base URL from our constants file, base URL. Make sure to import that and add a converter factory for the JSON files. So that will be a JSON converter factory dot create. And then we can simply call dot build afterwards. Next, we also need to create our actual API that we can get from that retrofit instance here. So let's create another val here, val API, which is also initialized by lazy. 
And that simply returns retrofit.create. And here we pass our notification API class.java. So as you can see, now we access that retrofit instance that we declared here by lazy. So only when we access it here, then this will actually be executed and not before that. So now we can actually go back to our main activity and create a function that makes that actual network request. So that sends that notification to our Firebase server. That will be a private function, send notification. And it will take our notification as a parameter, which is of type push notification. And this function will start a coroutine, coroutine scope in the IO dispatcher, dispatches.io.launch. And inside of this coroutine, we now want to open a try and catch block to be able to catch exceptions. So just E call an exception here. In that case, I simply want to lock that error. I will create a tag for that and also import lock and simply print E dot two string. Let's create that tag up here. Val tag is equal to main activity. And inside of this try block, we will make our request actually. So that will be a val response. So the response of our request will be retrofit instance dot API dot post notification. So that is our actual post function from our API interface here. And as a parameter, we simply pass our notification here. And after that, we can check if that response was successful. If it was, then we simply want to make a debug log here, pass our tag and simply print that response, for example. And that will be, we will create a JSON here to actually be able to deserialize that. Um, we have to make curly brackets, JSON dot to JSON. So we can actually print that JSON response. That will be the response here inside of that parameter. And if that response was not successful, so in the else block, we will simply make another error log, pass our tag and print our response.errorbody.toString. Then we want to execute that function when we click on our send button. So inside of our onCreate function, we will call button send dot set on click listener. First, we want to get the title of that notification from et title dot text dot to string. And we want to get the message for that notification from et message dot text dot to string. Then we can check if our title is not empty and also our message is not empty. And if they're not, then we want to create a topic we want to send this notification to. So let's actually do this up here as a global variable that will be a val topic or actually let's make this a const val const val topic is equal to um, slash topics. And here we can name it whatever we want. I will call it my topic here. So what we can do with this topic is we can let our app subscribe to specific topics and then we can declare a topic when we send that notification. So that notification will be sent to all devices who subscribe to that specific topic. And that's exactly what we're going to do here first. Later, I will also show you how to send a notification to a specific user. So just to a single user, not to all users who subscribe to that topic. But first of all, let's create a push notification here. And that will contain a notification data. We pass our title and message here. And as the two parameter, so to whom we want to send that notification, we simply pass our topic. And then we can call dot also afterwards and call send notification and pass it. So that will be enough to send notifications. But for now, we don't have any functionality to receive them. And to actually receive them, we need to create a service because we also want to be able to receive them when our activity or when our app is closed. We need to create a service that runs in the background and is notified when we get a new notification. So let's go to our project package and create a new class. Select class here and that will be our Firebase service. 
that class will inherit from Firebase Messaging Service. And in here we can override a specific function called onMessageRecieved. I will actually rename this parameter to message. So that will be the function that is called whenever this device receives a message. So in our case here, whenever the device that subscribed to this topic gets a new message inside of this topic, then this onMessageRecieved function will be called. And then we can get that message from this message parameter here. So what we want to do inside of this Firebase service class now is whenever we receive that message inside of this function, we want to create a notification and show it. And if you don't know how to display a notification here, then I suggest to watch my video about that first in my Android Fundamentals series, because I won't go into too much detail about this. But anyways, let's create an intent here that we're going to use to open up our main activity when we click on that notification. That will be an intent. We need to import that here. Pass this as a context and our main activity double colon class at Java. Then we will have our notification manager, which we'll get from get system service context dot notification service. And we need to cast that to notification service notification manager. Then we have to give our notification an ID to uniquely identify it. I will just randomly generate one here, notification ID and set it to random. Make sure to select that kotlin.random.nextInt. So by doing this, we just make sure that we always have a different ID because if we would use the same ID, then the old notification would be overridden by the new one. And we rather want to have two notifications displayed at the same time or three or even more. So you, you get what I mean. Then I will add a flag to our intent, intent.add flags. And that flag will be intent.flag activity clear top. That will just make sure when we click on our notification that all activities that are not our main activity will be cleared until our main activity is on top of our stack. Not really important in our application here because we only have a single activity, but I think you should add that if you plan on implementing this functionality in an app with several activities or fragments and you can have a back stack that is just greater than one. After that, we can create our pending intent from our intent that we created before. We are going to set that to panning intent dot get activity. Here we're going to pass this for the context. I will just pass zero for the request code. We're not going to need this and pass our intent that we created before. And as a flag for this panning intent, we want to pass the flag one shot, which we need to import here. That is just used to declare for that panning intent that it can only be used once. So whenever we click on our notification, then this pending intent is basically consumed. And after that, it cannot be used anymore because then we open up our activity. Next, we can create our actual notification. So val notification and set that to notification compat dot builder. And inside of this builder, we need to pass our context and a channel ID for our notification channel. So since Android Oreo, we have to create a channel for our notifications that I'm going to do in this tutorial too, of course, because otherwise this won't work. But we have to declare an ID for that channel. And I will make this ID constant up here. That will be a const val. Actually, we can make this a private const val because we are only going to need this inside of this service class. And I will call this channel ID and set it to my channel. I don't know, choose anything you want. And then we can simply pass that my channel or the channel ID in our builder constructor. Then we can, let's actually make a little space here so I can read that better. After that, we can modify that notification. We can set the content title to our message. So the message we received from Firebase dot data and we want to get the title of that data. So you can basically treat this message very similar to a hash map or actually this this data here is a map you can see. So just key value pairs 
we can access the title and get the title out of that data. And we can do the same for the actual message. So we can write set content text instead. And here we want to pass message.data. And instead of the title, we want to get the message. Then what we also need to declare is a small icon for our notification. So we call set small icon and I don't have an icon for that yet. So let's quickly import that in our rest folder. Right click on drawable vector asset and I will just choose this very basic Android notification here but you can click on clip art here and choose any icon you want. Just click on next and finish and then we can pass that icon by writing r.drawable.ic and write black. Then we want to set auto cancel to true. So basically that the notification is deleted when we click on it and set the content intent of that notification to our pending intent we created above. And then we can call that build afterwards. And now when we have that notification variable, we can actually display it. So we can use our notification manager we created above and call that notify on that. We have to pass our notification ID and we have to pass our actual notification. And as I said, after Android Oreo or actually also for Android Oreo, we need to create a notification channel. We want to send that notification into. So let's create that channel in a separate function. That will be a private function, create notification channel that will take our notification manager as a parameter and inside of that function block we will have a val for that channel name doesn't really matter what you choose here I will just choose channel name then we will have the actual channel so val channel is equal to notification channel where we are going to pass our channel ID then our channel name and the importance underscore high which we are going to import from this year notification manager then we can call dot apply afterwards and here we can modify that channel as we want we can give it a description my channel description choose whatever you want here it's also not very important we can enable the lights so that notification actually lets our devices LED light blink and we can also set the light color of that LED light to color.green for example choose whatever you want here and after that we can call notification manager dot create notification channel and pass our channel here and as you can see we get a bunch of errors here if we hold on to this this call requires API level 26 and our current minimum is 21 so just click on add requires Android O annotation and then these errors will be gone. Then we need to make sure to actually call this function up in our on message receive function right at this point here. We will check if our build.version.sdk int is greater than or equal to build.versioncodes.o, so Android Oreo. If that is the case, we want to call our create notification channel function and pass our notification manager. And that is everything for now for our service class. Now the only thing we need to do to actually be able to receive notifications inside our topic here or my topic is we need to make some changes in our manifests file. So let's open that. And first of all, we need two permissions here. So open RB uses permission here. First of all, internet permission for our retrofit request. Then we can duplicate that. And we also need the permission to receive messages from Firebase. That will be com.google.android.c2dm.permission.receive. So don't worry if that doesn't appear for you in the auto suggestions, that's normal. And what we also need to add here is our actual service that we created before. So make sure to do that inside of this application tag. We will open a service tag here pass our Firebase service, it already suggests it. Then we can also add a permission to that service. So inside of this service tag, we add that permission tag, com.google.android.c2dm.permission.send. 
So that will just be the permission to send notifications, which we'll need for that service. And inside of this service tag, when we open that up, we will add an intent filter, which will also open up here. First of all, we want to add an action to that intent filter with the name com.google.firebase.messaging event. Messaging event. You can also find all these packages here in the Firebase documentation. So if you wonder from where I know that, and we will have an action here with the name com.google.android.c2dm.intent.receive. That is also just needed to be able to receive messages. And currently we are able to send notifications into that topic here we declared above, but we haven't subscribed to that topic yet. So that's the last thing we need to do to actually be able to receive messages inside of this topic. But that is just a single line that is Firebase messaging dot get instance dot subscribe to topic. And here we're going to pass our topic. And to test if it is actually working, I will launch both of my emulators with the same app, of course. And take a look here. I will choose hello as a title and guys as a message. And when I now click on send, it should send this notification with the title hello and the message guys into our my topic here. And every app that subscribed to that my topic will now receive that notification. So that means that also the the app that well, that this notification was sent from will receive that notification because both of our apps subscribed to that topic. So let's click on send. And you can see the notification pops up in both devices. So that is exactly working as expected. But as I said, I will also show you how we can only send that notification to a single device or to several devices that we specifically declare. And for that, we want to go back into Android Studio. So when using Firebase Cloud Messaging, every device or basically every instance of your app will have a unique registration token assigned. And that registration token can now be used to send that notification to a specific device. So when we use that registration token and pass it instead of this topic here, then this notification will only be sent to this registration token. So only the, the device with that token will receive that notification. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to actually find out what is our registration token. And we're going to do this up here. We can get this by writing Firebase instance ID dot get instance dot instance ID. And here we can add an on success listener to that where we can receive our notification token by writing it dot token. So what I will do here is I will set the text of our token edit text, so et token to that token to it.token so that we can simply copy that token from that edit text and paste it in our other app to tell our app that it should only send that notification to that specific token, so to our other app. However, if you use that in a real project, then you definitely don't want to do that like this, of course. Then you rather want to save that token for each user in a remote database, so for example, in Firestore. And if you then have a chat application, for example, and you want to send a token to a specific user ID, then you can use that user ID to get the token of that user from your Firestore database and then send a message to that token or a notification. And generally, it is also best practice to save that token in shared preferences. So that's what I will do here. I will do this in our Firebase service because you can see we get a warning here if we hold on to this. Apps that use Firebase Cloud Messaging should implement on new token in order to observe token changes. So whenever that token changes that can happen, then we of course want to update our current token and that will happen inside of this Firebase service class. So I will solve this by creating a companion object here so we can access that token from everywhere. Here I will we will have an instance to of our shared preferences object. So var shared pref is equal not equal to its of type shared preferences, which is nullable and I'm going to set it to null initially. 
we have to set that shared preferences variable from the outside because we cannot access our Firebase service class from within our companion object. That's why we have that shared preferences variable there. And we're going to set this inside of our activity class. Then we will have our token. So our token, that is a nullable string. And for that token, I will override the default getter and setter because when we get that token, what we want to do is we want to return that token from our shared preferences. So return shared preferences dot get string token. And in case that is not available, then we simply want to return an empty string. And in the setter, we will have our value. So the new value for our token. And we will use our shared preferences object to call dot edit and call dot put string. We want to put the token with the value value and call dot apply afterwards to write this into our shared preferences. By the way, sometimes you also see people calling commit, but that is synchronous and apply is asynchronous. So that will happen in the background. So always make sure to use apply for shared preferences. And if you're not familiar with getters and setters in Kotlin, that just overrides the default getting and setting of our token. So whenever we would write print token, for example, then we would get the value of that token. And instead of getting the actual value of the token, we will instead get this value. So the value from our shared preferences. And if we assign a new value to our token, so if we write token is equal to anything, then we will actually use this setter here and the value will be that new string. So we will save that new string in our shared preferences. That's what these getters and setters mean. And then we want to override on new token. As that warning here says that we should override that function. I will name this parameter new token. So whenever we get a new token, then this function will be called and we can save that new token in our shared preferences. So we can simply use our token variable and set it to our new token. And then it will automatically be saved in our shared preferences because we set the setter here according to that. And then we want to go back to our main activity and actually assign that token that we got from here to our service token. So Firebase service dot token is equal to it dot token. And also we shouldn't forget to set the shared preferences object in our Firebase service in on create. So we have to make sure to do that before we get our token. We just call our Firebase service dot shared preferences and set it to get shared preferences. We have to give it a name. I will call it just shared pref and open it in mode private. And now instead of sending this notification here to a specific topic, Instead, we want to send this notification to our token. So to the token we declared in the edit text field. I will get this token by writing val token, or actually let's call it recipient token. And that is equal to et token dot text dot to string. We can also check if that is not equal to null and recipient token dot is not empty and then simply pass that instead of the topic. And let's actually try that out and run both of our apps in both of our emulator. And as you can see, the token is now displayed in the edit text for that token. And if we now want to send a notification from this device to this device, then we need to copy the token of the recipient. So copy and instead of this text here, we want to paste our token from the other activity, click on paste. So that will now be the recipient token. We can enter a title, hello guys, and click on send. And then only this device will receive that notification as you can see. And yeah, as I said, normally you wouldn't of course do it like this with that edit text field and that token. That is just for simplicity in this tutorial. Usually you have user accounts and for each user account, you save that token as a parameter in that database. And then you can simply receive that token whenever you want to send a message to that particular user. So that was a rather long tutorial, but I still hope that it helped you because a lot of people requested such, such a tutorial. And also please tell me below what you think about these kind of 
tutorials because for now I always make tutorials that cover an entire series, so a more complex project. But I'm thinking about making more of these mini projects basically that just that I can cover in a single video. So please tell me below if you like this video, that would be really helpful for me. And have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.